welcome to Sisters in a City with me, Anna Vakili. And me, Mandy Vakili. Before we start this episode, there's a lot of new people listening in. So many newcomers. So I just wanted to quickly let you all know that we do the regular episodes every Tuesday, we let them out, but we also have a Patreon platform. So if you want to be a bestie, you can join Patreon and you get a whole extra episode every Thursday. A whole extra episode. Just also, another one of these. Yeah. And also all the regular episodes, you can listen to them and watch them without ads. Ad free, baby. Yeah. Ads be annoying. <laughs> Also on Patreon, we've got a group chat, which is like a beauty, makeup, all this kind of thing, advice. So everyone just gives each other advice. And we've got another group chat. Everyone's become like best friends in there. I know. <laughs> like they be talking in there all the time, like the time. looking out for each other. I love it though. They like support each other. It's really nice. So cute. Um, but yeah, guys, we're back. I feel like I've been back after ages because yeah. I'm one week post-op. So look, there's my surgery bra. Anna's soldering it right now, yeah? Yeah, can you believe it? Like she just had surgery a week ago. Like, she must feel fucked. If it was me, I wouldn't be here. I'm calling <laughs> sick. I'm like, sorry, I've called in sick. Have we ever called in sick before? Yeah, we have. Before Patreon. I think see. it was me once because yeah. of me we called in sick. Yeah. We could still technically call in sick. Like, you guys would just get so angry, wouldn't but you? Yeah. Um. Anyway, well, obviously I had surgery. So I thought I'll just quickly tell you guys it's all gone well, as you can tell. I'm here. Like, I'm not... She's alive. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> and my boobies are very, 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 very swollen. But from what I can see, they look good. Yeah. So, a lot of people have asked who I went to. I went to Dr. Serkan Balta in Istanbul. I've got a whole, que- like, vlog that I filmed while I was there. And I'm answering loads of questions on there. So, it goes into more detail. But... I'm loving what I'm seeing so far. I think I finally got my dream boobs, which is crazy. Yeah, touch wood. <laughs> um, I'm super jealous. <laughs> like, I really want to go, but Anna's like, just wait, be patient, see how mine look. Yeah, just see how mine turn out. But so far, so good. Like, I'm, I couldn't be happier. Oh, I'm really happy for you. Um, but yeah, so I went to Istanbul with Kauslik, for whoever doesn't know. And yeah, he was... The supportive boyfriend, Aww, so, so cute. Sweet. You're so lucky, you know, because like Kalsik is that kind of guy that would be like really caretaking and, you know, nurturing. Yeah. I can only imagine the nightmare I would have had if I weren't with Gingerbit. Really? <laughs> yeah, like Gingerbit, I'd come out of surgery, like in that horrific pain, bleeding, like, and then Ginger would be on the phone making like business calls and I'd be like, <laughs> Well, he'd be like, stop over exaggerating. <laughs> do you think? No, I think he wouldn't be like that. I think he'd be pr- pr- proper caring, Mandy. I don't think he'd know. When what you're to do. in that position, you got you you gotta be right. Yeah, I'd um, rather take you though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, I'm not gonna lie. Like that trip, I just saw him in an in a not that I didn't see him in that light before, but I feel like I was t- talking to him while I was there. I feel like we became so much closer yeah. in that trip. Because going through things together makes you closer. 100%. And you know what's a weird thing is like, I always used to say, you know, don't let your boyfriend see you in certain situations and conditions. No. Yeah, because like, for example, don't they say you shouldn't let your man see you when you give birth? That's different. That's a human coming out of the vagina. Okay, but even this, I used to think that I wouldn't want my guy to see me when I've just got out of surgery or I'm really in a bad state. I don't want him to t- take... I don't want him to see me in, like, that no. condition. I think I know what you're saying, but not at this stage of the relationship. Like, yeah, yeah maybe at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Because, obviously, guys, we went in there. Firstly, the first night was so cute because I was so anxious. We literally slept in a single hospital bed. We were literally like this in That's a single so hospital bed. It's like the notebook when they die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so cute I can't and then anyway after I got out of surgery he was just so like there for me like changing my clothes literally like at every need like everything I needed he was there changing my clothes all the time bringing me food and then when it got to like I think it was day three or or something I could take a shower he washed me in the shower we were in the shower and he literally like I swear to god he was washing me so gently so washed sweet. my hair <laughs> he's so, so cute, cute. So and like, at one point he was trying to wash my bum crack I was like stop don't, it don't you're go going too far you're going <laughs> like, way too far now <laughs> But um, ain't no old woman out here. <laughs> yeah, but to be fair, I couldn't I couldn't move my arms. You back might get there. to that stage one day when you're old, where he <laughs> might have to actually wash your ass crack. But um, it was just so adorable because you know what? It did remind me a lot. Like basically, one of my I don't know if you know the psychopath ex boyfriend that ghosted me. Mm. Um, I remember one of the things that 
I think were one of the reasons we broke up, I believe, was I went for a BBL and yeah. I was very swollen and I looked horrific. I was like bruised up. And I remember he once changed me out of my compression garment and like, I don't know, I washed it. And I remember a, a, a memory and it was one of my last memories with him. <laughs> He must be thinking, this girl's come back battered. Yeah. Like, I do not want to have sex with this woman. Yeah, I was swollen and bruised up and stuff. And like, anyway, I just remember that being one of my last memories. And I feel like I could just feel the energy that I put him off. You know? Uh, if you're going to put a guy off over getting a BBL, like, he should be be out here paying for BBLs. Yeah. Getting you the best BBL possible. Flying you out to Brazil and shit. And exactly. he's getting cut off. I know. What and a... I was just maybe like a little bit paranoid. I was mm. like, maybe I'm just being paranoid that he's been put off. But literally within a few Energy weeks... Energy speaks loud. I know it does, right? I think it does. And then within a few weeks, we <laughs> broke up. And then years later, when I got out of Love Island, yeah. I got a message from God. his new girl's friend saying he was talking about how one of the reasons why he broke up with me is because I put on weight and I went for a BBL and you stuff like that. You have to put that. on weight for the BBL. <laughs> All these BBLs are such a mistake. Anna literally lost a man over it. Like, don't get <laughs> surgery, guys. It's like such a mistake. Like, he didn't even want a big batty. Good riddance, man. Yeah, fuck him. Oh, fuck him. But you know what? I was thinking, because I was that was also something that always made played on my head. So I was thinking, you know, if Cal's, like, when he sees me in this condition, like, with my boobs all bruised and... So past that, though. And swollen, like, you didn't know what my boobs looked like when he was showering me. Like it, I know. It looked horrific, yeah? I've had, like, three boob jobs. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. Maybe because this is my third one, I'm getting so much reconstruction and getting it fixed. Yeah. It was the worst like in terms of what it looked like yeah, 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 straight after. Saying. And I thought, it might put him off. And then I thought to myself, you know what? These things are good tests because if it puts a guy off, then at Fuck least... that guy. That's exactly. not true love. So it's a good test. It's good to go through these things yeah. with your partner because then you know whether they're I know what you're saying. One. I'm fully at that stage of my life like where I know nothing is going to put him off. Yeah. Like I literally are spreading my legs and like I'm making him zoom into my scars and like I take my off a week yeah I was like look at my scars and I take off my top and I stand in front of him topless and not in the sexy way we're not having sex I'm just standing topless yeah. pointing out all my scars like okay I wouldn't go that far but yeah, that's I wouldn't go I that far because you know why you shouldn't still try and act confident in front of this your this is partner. not me trying to like be like, oh my god, I'm so bad. This is me trying to be like, you know, you should pay for more stuff and like get me like <laughs> my scar removal treatments or maybe a new boob job. <laughs> oh god. Anyway, but, um, it's good that you did that. Yeah, no, I, we were. I was talking to him and I was like, after this trip, I feel like not only are we closer, but I'm gonna stop having this battle in my head. Like, is he the one? Is he not the one? Because I constantly battled that before. But yeah. I feel like after that trip, I just feel like he's the one. Looks like I need a trick. <laughs> I need a surgery trip because I'm still battling. I just felt so like he's the one comfortable and like so amazing. He's your person, my person. I felt safe and he was just honestly amazing. I can't. I have to give him credit when it's due. Like he was so amazing during that whole time that it just makes me so emotional. And when's the wedding? <laughs> when's the wedding? <laughs> yeah. So what? A, what an amazing, what amazing man. Aww. He is. Um, so yeah, anyway, guys, healing. Um, the swelling's already gone down so much now and it's looking great. And yeah, there's not much else to say about that. I'm going to go into, like I said, detail about the mm. surgery on my vlog. Yes. So yeah. Other than so that... literally, our last episode, you were going to go for a boob job and now yeah. you've had your boob job. Yeah. That's a madness. I know, right? Um, well... If you don't know, I passed my driving. <laughs> She's passed her driving. Nothing exciting happened to me in my that's life so apart from that. That's so exciting. I know, but it's not like, you know, going and having your boobs reconstructed and finding out your man's the one. It's not as <laughs> <I> exciting. <didn't... laughs> like, mine was like, I passed. At the age of 32, I passed my driving. Oh my God. Like, you passed your, your driving and I was so happy and I was so excited for you. And then... Um, I know. Kalsik was like, don't you think you're all like being really over the top that she passed her driving? Oh my, my God, it was a madness. Like my mum was crying. It was like I won the lottery. Yeah. I've never been uh, probably the happiest day of my life, yeah? I mean, thank God I didn't come with you to like look after you on your surgery because I wouldn't have my license right now. <laughs> and plus you wouldn't have found out that like, Kyle's Dick's the one. <laughs> Stop taking it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. So anyway, the morning of my driving test, yeah? I'm panicking. I'm stressing. I'm sweating. And I made myself boiled eggs and avocado, like Eddie Abu star because he says like don't eat bread in the morning. So I've been doing that for a while. I think it's working. Anyway, then I forget to turn the gas off. 
So I've had my eggs, so the gas is still on, and now I'm rushing, making a coffee, and I've put my lovely black mango coat on the stove. Who puts anything on the stove? Even if the stove's off. That's what Ginger Fizz said. Like, even if the stove's off, like, who puts anything on a stove? <laughs> this is the funniest thing. You know what you sound like? You sound identical to him. <sighs> Next thing you know, man's having a coffee. Then I smell a burning. There's a burning smell. I turn to my left. My entire mango coat is on fire. There's oh. a fire. Oh my God, mate, I fucking died, yeah? I'm like, Ginger <laughs> Oh my God, and then... Like screaming. What do you, I don't even know what to do with a fire. There was like a big part like, of my coat that wasn't like on the stove. It's such a big coat, yeah? So I just like lifted that part of the coat and like started slamming it on the, the, the part fire. of the coat that was on fire. And I'm like, Ginger Bid! And like Ginger Bid runs upstairs like butt naked, yeah? Because I was about to get in the shower and it's like smoke and I've just about to put, put out the fire. Oh my God. I would just, like, I'd panic so much in that situation. You know what I'm like? I start screaming and running around the house. Oh my God, my driving instructor's outside. I'm literally just going to my test. What a way happened. to start. What a way to start. This whole house smoke. <laughs> and like, Ginger was like, who puts anything is that on the stove? I've, like, I've never seen anyone put anything, put on, anything the on the stove ever in my life. Like he goes, there's this massive table here. There's this big counter here. Yeah, there's all this space. Why did you do that? Oh, I'm like, you know, I'm not with it yet. Before exams, I've forgotten what I'm, I'm, I'm like. Yeah. I'm so bad before exams. Yeah. Because you know, if you put water sometimes on fire, it gets worse. Yeah. So I do, I just never know what I need to. Learn. I mean, I, pro- I probably would have just put water if that slamming thing didn't but you work. Know when you put Suffocating. Water on a big yeah. fire sometimes it gets worse. No? I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know as well. <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> anyway, I uh, always think about fires though. I'm really scared of them. Or what would I do in a fire? Me too. I'm I really always scared think about them. you're on the ground floor. What the fuck are you thinking about? I'm gonna cut your house. <laughs> True. I but always like, think. The, what would I'm, I do? I'm scared of fires in I've general. I've already planned what I do anyway. I literally like I'd. Like, put my dog in a pillowcase, wrap them in a duvet, and then, like, throw them down. You put them in a... I put them in a pillowcase. Right. And then I'd roll them in a duvet. Okay. And I'd throw them down. Because there's only the one fire. floor. No, it's only one outside the window because there's only one floor. <laughs> okay. Like, if I jumped that floor, I'd probably just oh, break my legs. Oh, I see what you mean. Roll them out the window. Yeah. But, like, because it's only one floor... Yeah, they'd they'd be fine in that duvet. It's not like fucking like ten floors. Because what? Because you always have to think. Like, what would you do with have your you dogs? Planned your whole thing. I planned it. Yeah, because I'm so scared of fires. One of my biggest fears. Oh. Um, wow. How did we get onto this fire I thing? Have, this is so you weird. Burnt, you burnt your yeah, jacket. Yeah, because I burnt. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I went to my test and I passed, and I was Amazing. excited over the moon, crying. My mom was crying, and then I became a devil immediately after. Why? Because I'm like, why don't I have a car? <laughs> Anyway, that's my little mini catch-up of what, what's happened in my life. Basically. Finally, at the age of 32, got a license. Yeah, the fact that you guys were crying, though, was a bit over the top, no? I don't know what it is, because <laughs> you're acting like you've got your degree, I've like master's. totally become, my, become an adult now. You're 32. <laughs> yeah, and someone this morning, a plumber came round, and he was like, um, how old are you, by the way? Because I was going on about getting my license. And then he was like, um, you're 32, and you just got it. It was really embarrassing. <laughs> And I was like, listen, I lived in West London my whole life. Like, I didn't need one. And also, because I had a car, you didn't feel like you needed to. Yeah, take and even when you had a license, you weren't using a car because we were like five minutes from Acton Town Station. And before that, we lived in Notting Hill. Like, who has a car in the West End? Yeah, but then before Notting Hill, that's when I... At that point, I was young. Because that's like, before Acton times, and then before Notting Hill... Um, it was when you just came out of Love Island. That's not that young, Mandy. Yeah, it's true. It's I was not that young. Twenty nine years old. But it would it would not have been really. Don't make excuses for your lazy, lazy behavior. Maybe that you didn't get your license sooner. I didn't even try You're though. Like... I didn't even try. If I even if I tried, then okay. I didn't even try. I didn't even try. I did my fucking theory pass first time. Did my test pass first time. That's me trying for the first time. Yeah, but anyway, I know the reason why you didn't do it is because I had a license and I had a car all during our, like, uni years. Life, yeah. So you never felt like you needed one, which is fair enough. I was just using it, basically. Yeah. Anyway. And now you've got a lot of to repay now, a lot of driving to oh repay Oh, God. Do you, you always start being your fucking chauffeur? Yes. All right. Anyway, guys, today's episode, we thought it'd be fun to do, like, craziest superstitions. I don't know about craziest, but they're superstitions anyway. <laughs> that's not me. That's, sorry, it's a can. Um, Anna. Superstitions that I got people to send in on Instagram. I was going to say, like, do you have any weird things that you do? Like, do you have any, like, weird superstitious things that you do? Because I do. No. Apart from just, like, touch wood, which I think ev- most people do. Everyone does. Like, I, I do this thing sometimes, though. Like, 
if I say something like that like something might bad might happen and then I'll go I'm like, oh my God, if you're watching this, you can see what I'm doing. But I do this like three times. Okay. Isn't that a religious thing? No, not the, not the cross. I do this thing. Why? I don't know. I got it from our Afghan um, friend who is like our bestest friend. Mm. And she done it when we were really young and I was just stuck with me. No way. And it's like, oh my God forbid, God forbid. I just always thought you did like the Christian thing. She also got another thing to me. When your feet hit someone's foot and you have to shake hands, it means you're going to have a fight. These are weird things that like... There's so many. many superstitions, guys. Like when I was reading through them, I was like, what the hell? There's so many that... I can't even tell you. Go through them. No. Also, I can't walk on those things. You know, when it's free on pieces the f- on the on the pavement, and there's free things. Mm. There's so many. Like I can't, I, walk I can't even tell you how many superstitions. You're one of your ex boyfriends got me into that. Ruined my life since he said that. And now I'm jumping all over the pavement <laughs> since he told me that. I don't know. I don't really believe in all these superstitions, to be honest. Yeah. Do you? I've like, got OCD, so a little bit like I believe in the evil eye. Yeah. Like, I really believe in the evil eye. So, it's weird. Maybe I am superstitious because I believe in the evil eye. Like, I do touch wood. Yeah, but evil eye superstition is a massive part of, like, Persian culture. Yeah. It's like, honest, they're very fixated on it. All of their sort of, like, superstitious rituals are to do with the evil eye. Yeah. Um. I mean, guys, it was um, there was a guy that was basically ruining my life. He was basically stalking me, doing horrible, like online pages, hate pages on me. It was really, I went through a really horrible stage. Um, I don't know if I've spoken about it, but I will, I will talk about it in detail in a future episode. But it became a few months that he was just terrorizing me. And it my was cyber stalking. He was cyber stalking me. No, he was stalking in real life because yeah. he knew where I was and then putting it like yeah. message. It was just horrible. And then at one point, my mom was like, you know what? We need to just write his name on a piece of paper, put a cross through it and put it in the breezer. And we were like, what? We were like, what the hell? And when I did it, I swear to God, he disappeared. Disappeared. No, like from the moment she did it, he disappeared. It wasn't like days after, weeks after. It was like the next day, there was no sign. Could just be a coincidence, but... But then I did it. I had this ex-boyfriend as well, the bold one, Mm -hmm. who was like from abroad. Yeah. And he was like threatening me like all the time, like emailing me abuse. Mm -hmm. So we put his name in the freezer. You have to write it in every language that you know. And then you write his name in every language that you know. Then you do a cross for it, each one. Then you fold it up and you put it in the freezer. My God, he disappeared. Did he? He fucking vanished. And then we did it again with your ex-boyfriend. The thing is, I don't know, because that was an old freezer. They're gone. The the freezer's gone. The names have disappeared. I want a whole new freezer, obviously, in Kalsik's house. And I don't think he'd be very happy going through his freezer and seeing all these guys' names like... What's going on? Do you think they're still in the freezer? Like, whatever freezer they're in. I don't know. Imagine I go through the freezer and I see, like, girls' names like Sarah, Abby. I'll be like, what the... Yeah. F- Excuse me? The fuck? I mean, it's not that bad, though, because he's trying to get rid of them. Do you know what I mean? They're like widows. St- still, I don't want to be going into my freezer trying to go get, like, a pizza and then I see girls' names. Yeah, there's a bitch in the freezer. It's going to put me off my food. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, apparently that works. <laughs> yeah. So you should try that. And we've tried it like a few times. We've done it three times, Anna, yeah? Yeah. That first person, then we've done it my ex-boyfriend, then we've done it to your other ex-boyfriend who was like mm-hmm. upsetting me. And all three of them disappeared. Yeah. So what if you, you want know. them back? Then what do you do? You have to take their you... name out of the freezer? <laughs> yeah, if you want them back, I don't know what you'd have to do. <laughs> that's, that's too late. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I've got here one some someone sent in. If you walk over someone's legs, they stop growing. And by someone, I'm probably mean a child because yeah. an adult doesn't really doesn't grow. grow. Um, this is like a Russian and Jewish superstition. superstition. Yeah, because I kind of went and like done a bit of research on each one and I was like, oh, where did this come from? And if only someone stepped over my legs a few times, maybe, maybe I wouldn't have been so fucking tall. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I like being tall, yeah, but it'd be hard finding the right man. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The, the love life, it just gets even harder. <laughs> it's, yeah, the pool of men that we have to pick from is even smaller. We're already looking for someone successful, you know, good kind. size, penis, kind, loyal, good looking. <laughs> and then now, you have to, has to be like, six, six, six and above. foot and above. Like, it's hard life. That's why we're not leaving our, like, I'm not leaving you <laughs> bit. It's like, where am I going to find that? <laughs> it's true. This but is a wild superstition. It is a wild superstition. So, you know, they say that if they step over like a child, let's say they, they've got their feet up on a coffee table. If you step over them, you have to step over them again backwards yeah. if you want them to grow. Backwards? Oh, wow. Yeah, because if you made a mistake and you step over them, you have to step back over them. I'm going to threaten my future child. You better be good to me. I almost start stepping over you. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to remain a tiny little shit for the rest of your life. 
I thought that was mad. I'm going to wait till my child grows to the perfect, perfect height and, and then, then start just walking all over them. Yeah. Well, if it's a guy, you'd never walk over never. him because I wanted to be better. tall. Um, but yeah, the next one I've got here, which is something that mum did to us all the what time. What the fuck did she do? Tampons take your virginity. My gosh! She used to the say The lies! Stuff. She used to be like, don't use tampon, it's going to take a virginity. Don't use tampons when we were young. So I, Oh my God, I spent my whole life stinking of fish with blood running down my thighs because <laughs> I thought I need to keep a pussy tight. I need to keep the virginity because ain't nobody going to marry me or love me or be with me if I put a tampon inside me. Yeah, because back Where then... Where did I get this from? Back then as well, my mum used to be like, you know, you should stay a virgin until you get married Mate, back then. She said wilder shit than that. She said you can't ride a bike. <laughs> Do you remember? Yeah. She didn't ride bikes. It's crazy though how our parents have changed so much and my mum's changed so much from when she first moved here from Iran to now. She's a completely different person. So when I was reading these superstitions and I was like researching them, I looked over at her because she's living with me right now. I was yeah. like, mum, do you remember when you said tampon takes your virginity? What did she say? What did she say? I need an explanation. I need an explanation. And then she's like, yes, it does. And I was like, mum, it doesn't. She was like, well, it's not just that. It's it's really unhealthy for you. And then she said that apparently you lost your tampon once in your vagina and she took you to the doctors and the, the doctor had to find your tampon. Is this true? It never happened. I don't know. She's telling me this story right now. This is, this is literally just a few this hours ago, guys. <laughs> this has never happened. Maybe she's lying to me, just trying to make herself look better because, like, the reason why she was telling us not that to never use happened. Tampons, though. Otherwise, I would remember if that happened. I'd be scarred. Apparently, the doctor fished the, the and I'd have up. to be like so young to not remember. And I remember I wasn't wearing tampons when I was that young because I wasn't allowed because yeah. I thought I'd lose my virginity. So once I did lose my tampon inside me, though, yeah, it's, but I got it out really myself. That's, that's really, really dangerous. dangerous. Yeah, it was. I had, like two inside or even like three. I can't remember. It's fucked. But yeah, my cousin. Now I'm really anal with like. Take one out, put one in, take one out. Like, I make sure. Yeah, yeah. One of my cousins, not the one that went to Dubai, because <laughs> everyone thinks she's the only cousin. Yeah. One of our other cousins, she lost a condom inside her vagina for like, and it was there for ages, like, I think two weeks or something. And she started to get really bad stomach pains and stuff like that. Yeah, crazy. It's really dangerous. Yeah, tampons are dangerous. You have to be careful, but it doesn't take away your virginity. The bike. Do you remember? The, I used to ride the bike with a bit of space between my vagina and that pointy part because I always thought if the, too much pressure, I might lose my virginity. Yeah, so I was literally reading about it. And basically, obviously, it doesn't make you lose your virginity, but it's basically... Virginity is not a physical thing. That's a no, thing. It actually is, it's Anna. a social thing. No, so, because I started doing like a lot what of research. What do you mean? Virginity is a thing. It's your hymen wall. Yeah, yeah, but that hymen wall can gradually get. Basically, that doesn't have to break with sex. That can. That might not break with sex. Yeah, it could break with tampon. <laughs> it, it's like wear and tear. Is like that's what it is. Yeah, so bike riding can basically take away your virginity. Yeah, basically, a lot of things can can take away your like age, weight, physical activities, not just sex, but change or break, like, over yeah, time. most of the time, it's like, what, most of the time, it's going to be a fucking cock in it. I don't know. It's going to be a cock. Basically, it's just saying that tampons don't. Because, yeah, you know. They're not, because they're not big enough. Yeah. Yeah, but even... What if you're a virgin and you have sex with someone that's, like, the size of a tampon and then, like, you're still a virgin? Like, that would be amazing, innit? That body would not count. But that's why I'm trying to say you're not a virgin because a virgin is not like a physical thing. It's a... It's... What do you call it? It's not a physical entity. It's a social you know construct. What, yeah? Like, virginity, like, what the hell is it really? Like, you're right. It's a social construct. But when you're young and you're a virgin, like, it really don't mean shit because everybody around that age is a virgin. Yeah. Being a virgin now at 32 would be a stunt. Would it? Yeah, because everyone would be like, You'd look like a weirdo. Yeah, I'd look like a weirdo, but I could probably sell it for like five million. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those that save their virginity and then they sell it. Yeah, but do you know what I mean? If it's like a young girl doing that, it's giving it's giving creepy. Like, that's yeah. just weird. That's illegal. But when it's like a grown woman, I've saved it to this age. There was a woman that sold it for like two million. Yeah, but at your age, Mandy, no. People do that. Like, they sell their virginity in like, what, 20s? You're old I'm now. I'm way too old now. No one would even buy it. <laughs> They'll be like, who wants this old ass virginity? Like... <laughs> But yeah, look, they say that virginity is just a tool that they've used to keep women powerless yes. and shamed for centuries. And dickless. <laughs> dickless for centuries because of this imaginary wall. We've been dick... They've been sticking it everywhere. Yeah, but we... No, because of this hymen. Why does it? Why was our bodies even created like that? That you have to know. Because if we didn't bleed the first time, then no one would ever know who's a virgin who's not. So we were created... 
in a patriarchal way, in yeah. a misogynistic way, our bodies, our <laughs> sexism. <laughs> Everything's been Wait, against us so? from the beginning. <laughs> Basically, because... Yeah, it's like you're de- it's determined if you're a virgin or not just by the fact that if you bleed when you have sex. It's that's ridiculous. unfair. It's ridiculous because so many people don't bleed as well. It's true. Yeah, imagine those. They never have that moment. Like I said, a lot of physical things can break your virginity as well. well. But anyway, very complicated. Basically, and- you can carry on pretending you're a virgin right now if you really want. But why would you? Because that's just weird. Because <laughs> you would be a virgin, especially at this age 32. <laughs> Okay, um, I've got here, if you bite your tongue, someone is bitching about you. I tried to like read up on this, but there was not much. It's just a spiritual superstition that people have, that if you bite your tongue. Someone's talking about you. But yeah. I'd be biting my tongue all the time because all the time people are talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure people talk about me and you a lot. I know, I mean, we're constantly probably being bitched about. Yeah. But I don't bite my tongue. So it's obviously, me too. So this is not a true superstition. But when I do bite my tongue, I'd be looking at everyone around me like... Automatically, about me. it's mad that these things are like in your head that they're ingrained. Yeah, it's crazy that you automatically think, "Oh my god, someone's bitching about me." But yeah. it's, it's ridiculous, really. If you had the power to like hear, like if God had could put on like a little trailer for you of hearing every single person that said anything negative or horrible about you, would you want to watch it? No way. Why would I want to do that? Mm. Would you? No, but I'd like to watch the one which is like everyone saying good this. <laughs> <laughs> if there's a trailer of like all the good things, all the good things anyone has ever said about you, I'd want to watch that. Oh, 100%. That would be amazing. Oh, she's fit. Oh, yeah. she's so sweet. Oh, da, da, da. yeah, I'd love to watch that. <laughs> all right, we've got here. This is a Persian superstition. Ooh. And I actually confirmed it with mum because I was going through these with mum. And I said, mum, is this an actual thing? Because someone sent this in. If you get a new car, which you're going to have soon, right? Oh you need to God. drive over. Oh, she's going to say this. You need to drive over four eggs. Or else, or else you'll crash. Wow. So what is going to d- determine the safety of my driving and me not crashing is driving over four eggs, which right. just could be so, eaten. So I go to mum. Mum, is this a thing? And she goes, yeah, not only four eggs. Sometimes we put a lamb or a chicken. In a-, a lamb? Yeah. <laughs> a live one? She said it so normally, yeah? Sorry, a live one? A live one. A live lamb or chicken. Mm-hmm. A murder. M- a murder and has to take place. It's not even funny. It's not even funny. I was like... What do you mean, mum? She was like, is it a sacrifice? And she was like, it's the same concept with the eggs because an eggs really is a live thing. It's going to grow into a live thing. So well, I'm glad they've downgraded from live lambs and chickens to eggs. I know, but the fact that they see it as like the egg is a live being and then you have to kill it, you have to kill something so that it basically, there's blood. Even though with eggs, like, there's no blood. Crack the eggs in a pan and eat them and sacrifice it in the kitchen. <laughs> It's some crazy shit. And oh I was God, like... God, all the lambs and chickens that In been... Iran. I know, right? I, I can't. And um, yeah, it's basically the blood is saying that you're not going to crash and there's going to be good energy around your car. Oh my God. So are you going to run over four eggs, Mandy? I mean, I'm just going to have to, innit? Someone's going to see me like outside the flat building putting <laughs> eggs on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> like a fucking weirdo like a psychopath I, I want to place those eggs on the floor and drive over them it's so and creepy. they're going to be like what the hell are you doing and I'm like better this than a chicken or a lamb <laughs> then while uh, when I asked her she went on to tell me some more <laughs> she oh started God, going on she was no. like oh, yeah she was like also in Iran when brides get married the, the man's family have to kill a sheep yeah and then she, the bride has to step over the sheep and it basically is a sacrifice to and the, they give the, the meat to poor people, basically, in wherever they are. They give the meat to poor people and it brings your marriage good karma. Oh, okay. Well, that shit's going to have to happen, mate. Gingerbread's family better go grab that sheep. <laughs> the, the thing is, like, they don't, <laughs> I'm just, a fly of they the don't sheep. waste the meat of the sheep. They give yeah. it to poor people. And then, basically, it's like good karma for, yeah. your, for your wedding. But I just feel like that would be bad karma. And I, I want to do a prank, man. I think you should both do it. We should what? both do it. Like, actually record it and be like, Gingerbread, listen, like... Something very serious. If we do get married, your family needs to go and kill a sheep. <laughs> and like fully, fully serious. I just want to hear the it's, response. The reaction. Do you want to do the it now? Reaction? Do you want to do it now? Shall I? Go on then. Um, guys, so yeah. basically, um, you know, if me and you get married, yeah, yeah. There's like this very important belief, like in Persian culture. 
in Iranian culture that you need to do. And I need to tell you from now, just like in, in case that like, you're not up for doing it, then we obviously can't Ooh. move forward being together. To give you gold, go fuck yourself. Bro. No, it's not the gold part. What? So if me and you get married, you and your family need to go and uh, kill a sheep, like slaughter a sheep. Mandy, Mandy. Forget what you lot defending that. You're joining my culture. No, I need you and your family to go slaughter my... a sheep and then no. I need to jump over it. <laughs> you got fucked up, yeah? Are you willing to cut the sheep's throat? Maybe... Well, wouldn't... Yeah, but you wouldn't let me do it because you love animals. It's part of my tradition. Like, I, you need to speak to your dad and your mum now and ask them if they're okay with, like, slaughtering a sheep. No, they wouldn't be. Even for our happiness and our love and our... No. Uh... Mate, you want to join my bit, bro? You, you do. You join the paddling pool with your bikini out, bro. He's all what, for christening. Christening. Yeah. <laughs> all right. That was funny. You know, right. you'd get, you know, you'd actually have to be in a rubber ring and you know, dunk the baby. Yeah. I'm head. all. I'm all off being dunked in a bikini. All right, I've got to go. Bye. Wait. Well, he's actually like, go <laughs> fuck yourself. <laughs> also, I've got more to tell you. Tell so, me. Apparently, what more? The first time we went to Iran, you were seven and I was nine. When we arrived at our grandma's house, she killed a lamb in front of us when we came to her house, apparently. <laughs> this is barbaric. <laughs> I know, it's crazy. Shit going on. People this is making us look really bad. I know, people listening to this are going to think, what the hell? I don't remember this. I want to remember right, this. This is PTSD shit. I want to remember this. you were really interested to see what was going on. You were seven years old. Oh my God, am I a psychopath? <laughs> And then my I'm um, a Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> and mum was basically trying to cover our eyes so we didn't what, see it. And she was just saying, oh, don't worry, they're just giving it water. They're just giving it water. And apparently... I feel like I'm getting memories coming back of like something like that. Anyway, it's so sad because like that makes me sad that sheep was killed because of us. Even though we eat sheep, but... Why? What did they do with the sheep though? They gave the meat to the poor people. Who skins the sheep and like hunts it up? Like this sounds like a job for like cavemen. I don't know, man. But and when I when she told me that, I couldn't believe. It. I was like, Mom, what Why, the hell? was something bad was gonna happen to us when we come to Iran or it's something? It's just for good energy. Like you're sacrificing the sheep, giving it to good to poor people, and it's like good karma to your. In fact, it's bad karma. That's murdering what I think. a sheep. That's what I think. But then again, like, aren't we eating sheep every day? Like, and like pe- it's being killed for us to eat. Isn't it the same thing? It's being killed for food. I don't know, but I just I wouldn't want to watch a sheep get killed. No, How but weird. apparently I did because I was a small psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> like apparently I was really interested. She I am like, really interested though. She was like, Mandy kept trying to watch and trying to see what was going on. Like, wow. Oh my god, that's mental. a bad sign about my psychology. No, anyway, but Do you think? no. That's gonna play on my mind now, yeah. Just, no, it's not. Anyway, mum was just basically like, apparently they don't really do these things much anymore. It was kind of older generation. Yeah, thank God. Yeah, in Iran, they've kind of realized that these are all superstitions and they don't really do it much. Yeah, probably because they probably killed all these poor things and bad shit still happened. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, you know, I've had some wild superstition. This ain't even long ago, yeah? Like, my auntie from Iran came here mm. and we were basically talking about how if I um, get married to Gingerbeard and I want to have a baby, I want to have a boy. Yeah. So I kept saying, I want to... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I want to have a boy. Like, how do I... I really want a boy. Like, I want to make sure it's a boy, yeah? Bro, she caught some madness, yeah? What did she say? She was like, if you wrap an onion on your back... <laughs> With cling film, and it was an onion. It was an I don't onion, remember. no? I don't remember. I don't remember what she like, said. You put the onion on your back and you wrap it around your back, yeah, with cling film for like three, four months. What? Wrap an onion around your back? Yeah. What do you mean? Like wrap it, cling film? Cling with... film an onion to your back, bro. You'll be walking around. With a whole ass onion. So yeah. Like a lump on your back. A lump. You'll be stinking out it's, everywhere. Yes, I just, that, wouldn't that, that onion rot it? And... She goes, it one million percent. 100% she goes it works every single person that we know who's done it has ended up having a boy bro you better watch me if you, if you see me with a lump on the back of my back it's going to be an onion <laughs> so people actually have done that for three months they've done it because she's like yes. it will 100% works her statistics have actually it happens like you start doing it from the moment you find out you're pregnant or just before while you're trying I can't remember the exact dates and I don't even know if it's an onion I think it is I'm pretty sure it's an onion but if you guys know no. any different please correct me yeah but you wrap it around your back and you just live like that. So she's actually got statistics that are based on actual yes. people that have done this. And they've done it for, there's a different one for a woman, for a girl. And every time they've done it, it's happened. Wow. So that's, that's me and that onion. We're going to be conjoined twins. Because oh, you want a boy? <laughs> I mean, I did want a boy, like, at first, because I did want my daughter to have an older brother because I've never had one. I've always wanted one. 
Well, yeah. Yeah, not really actually had an older brother. And also, like, I know that Gingerbeard would love to have a boy. Mm. I don't know, but then as, like, time's gone on, I kind of do want a girl because, like, I want both. Yeah. I want a boy first, though. I don't want a little brother. I want a big brother. I used to always want a boy. And then now as time has gone on, I'm like, I don't want like one. Like men are so trash. Like we, we just don't want. <laughs> we don't want, we don't need any more men. We don't need any more men. <laughs> but it's not true. If you raise the right man. The right man. Isn't it in them? In their... Yeah. And I swear to God, if you notice, a lot of Iranian boys are really good. Yeah. Like because Iranian women are so strong mm-hmm. and like in the household, they do a lot of... It's so funny that you're saying this because literally as I was getting ready for the podcast... As I was getting ready today, I was putting my makeup on. I can hear Cowslick. My mum and dad's in the living room with him and they're having a conversation. And my dad's talking about how strong Iranian women are. And he's yeah. like, you know, he was like, I never got on with my, with your, with my, our mum's mum, my, my mother-in-law. I never got on with her because she wanted me to be like, obey her and stuff yeah. like that. And Iranian women are like that. And my mum was like, yeah, my dad used to basically do everything for my mum. And Cowslick was like, why? Why are Iranian men like this? And dad was like, they're not. It's just Iranian women are so strong yeah. that that's how it... We're very overpowering. And then he started going on about there's stories in Iran where the woman chopped the man's penis. Yeah, they and then are. He's, I just, don't, don't try that I, I'm home. in the bedroom just thinking, I wish I could see Kazdik's face. face. Oh, <laughs> God. I wish they were having these conversations with Gingerbread. I literally, I would pay for them to happen. Honestly, I swear, if there's a camera in the house with we me... Could, like, we need to start a reality yeah, TV yeah. show, I swear to God. It, honestly, his face must be like... <laughs> so scared. But because Iranian women are so strong, they take so much control in the upbringing of their their children mm. and the influence, you know. They're so dominant. Their mm-hmm. opinion is so dominant. So I think we would raise... Good boys. The most amazing boys. You think? Yeah. And how is the culture going to change unless women like us are doing that? True. Very, very, very true. Do you know what I mean? Fuck boys going to be extinct. I want to have so many sons. <laughs> All them onions I want to be buying. <laughs> but don't they say girls like bad boys? So then if you raise good sons, they're yes, just going to get... stupid w- girls like bad boys. Exactly. Like us, to be honest. No. In the past. In- Me in the past. Yeah. Me definitely in the past. Anyway, come on. Right. Well, there's a lot of superstition. I don't know if you know this. I didn't know this. About laundry. No. Did Tell you know me this? about this. Can I stop oh doing laundry? Oh my God. Laundry is so complicated. What? Yeah. Like... I can't even tell you every single one because there's so much. Please tell me but if I do with not doing laundry. Different, yeah, different nationalities, I'd say. Is it nationalities? Different origins yeah. have different superstitions. Talk to me. So basically, I know that Hindus, they don't believe you should do your laundry on a Thursday. It's really bad luck because the it will hinder the blessings of Lord Vishnu, who's regarded as the universe's protector and keeper. So that's Love Hinduism. It. But, so basically, you know how they say on New Year's Eve, like, I do this. I don't know if you do this. You should, like, basically, things should be new. Like, your house should be clean. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do your laundry. The Iranians like believe that a lot Iranians as well. Iranians believe that. But so, I'm pretty sure it's a Western thing as well, no? Yeah. Um, but it's bad luck if you do it on New Year's Day. New Year's Day, you shouldn't do any cleaning. You shouldn't do your laundry. Because if you wash your lawn, like, clothes on New Year's Day, you're washing away a loved one. So a family member's going to die. Oh, oh, oh. Over some aerial pods. <laughs> yeah. Family members are going to die just because of some aerial pods, some Lenore and some fresh burst and some clothes going in the fucking washing machine. Mm-hmm. The washing, Somebody might die. You're washing a loved one away in the process. If Gingerbread asked me to do any laundry on New Year's Day, I'm going to be like, do you want to die? <laughs> are you willing to die for the laundry? Bosnians don't do laundry on Tuesdays and Fridays. No, tell me more. Tell me more. There's loads, but Catholics, obviously, they don't think... You know how Sunday should be a day of rest? That's an actual thing. Yeah. Sunday should be a day of rest. You yeah, really I believe any- that. <laughs> I don't want to use my brain on a Sunday. Yeah. And Are you like that? I mean, I love resting on a Sunday, yeah. But that's Even kind of like... I like rest like every day. Like Sunday, I have to. Mm-hmm. A good Friday, which was just yesterday. Apparently, you shouldn't do any laundry on Good Friday. It's like the worst thing I didn't ever. do anything yesterday. Cleaning, including washing your clothes, is frowned upon on Good Friday. That's good, I didn't do it. According to Catholic tradition. Yeah. Okay, now tell me, is there anything that luck? I can use to not do laundry? Is yeah, there... you, basically, you can just say, it's a ginger bit, I can't yeah. do washing on a Thursday because yeah. it's bad luck for Hindus. Can't yeah. do it on a Friday because it's bad luck for, oh. I don't know, is it, oh, Bosnians. Yeah. Can't do it on a Saturday because technically that's the seventh day of the week for some people. Right. Because you shouldn't do anything on a seventh day. Can't do it on a Sunday because it's the seventh day, it's day of rest. Monday, basically, Monday I can't be doing laundry anymore. <laughs> It's just bad luck for me to do laundry. <laughs> That's it. Excuse it. No more washing in my house. 
Um, yeah, anyway, like, honestly, I can't even go into it because it's so long and complicated. But laundry has got a lot of superstition. Laundry, yeah. Who would have thought laundry's got superstition? I think, like, women just came up with this. So it have to do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Should we create a new superstition? You know, superstitions yeah. all started from like one person that just created it. Yeah. If you think about it. I want to just create one. Like yeah. Anything that benefits me, I want to create it. And then it. just like, you could just be like, you know what? If I do laundry on Monday to Friday, yeah. something always bad happens. Yeah. So like, I really don't... And you know, like, men, yeah. they're so dumb. Like, they literally believe anything. Yeah, like, they're if, like, you, if you said, you know what? I've suddenly found out that five days of the week, you shouldn't do laundry. You should only do it one day of the week because otherwise bad luck comes into your house. Mm. You'll be like, don't do the laundry. I know. Don't do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And look, when I was going like. through this, Kalsik was on the sofa and I was like, oh, there's superstitions. And he started going... He started yeah, getting yeah, into yeah, it. Bears, like, yeah. He was like, yeah, did you know that Ronaldo... Cristiano Ronaldo is always the last person walking onto the pitch every single time because it's, it's a superstition. And he always puts his right foot on the pitch first. Wow. And like, <laughs> he started going on and like, Steve Jobs giving me superstitions about him. He, he's got a lot of time, man. <laughs> How does Carlson find out all these fucking facts? Like, seriously. <laughs> Apparently, Steve Jobs walks around barefoot on company grounds because he says it's bad luck if he walks with feet with his shoes. Now, that's just unhygienic. And he wore <laughs> We oh created an apple and he's walking around barefoot in his mm -hmm. office. Like yeah, apparently he wears the same roll neck and trousers in at work. Maybe he sees it like it's good luck, you know? Maybe. You I'm know, one of those weird people. Yeah, if I'm I am, wearing well, yeah. something. If something good happens, that's it. Yeah, me too. I'm stuck with it. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm scared if I stop, then suddenly, like, bad things will start happening. I know, right? Sorry. All right, well, any more superstitions? I've got loads. After this, I'm going to be paranoid as hell. Okay, well, they've got loads. So I'll do a few more and then we're going to do part two on Patreon. So if yeah. you guys are having fun listening to these superstitions, we've got loads more on Patreon. So have you wanted to know about the black cats? Yeah. How black cats are so evil, apparently. I love black cats. I, I want a black cat. I know. They're I know. so pretty. We had one, but it was like... Well, what happened to it? It was really ill. It was really ill, yeah. yeah. And it was died. really sad. We bought it from some dodgy place, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I've always wanted a black cat. So this is a European superstition. Because I feel like a lot of like superstitions are from the Middle East. Yeah. Um, but actually, Europeans have a lot of their own. Yeah, they do actually. So this is a European one. And it all started from a Catholic church, a Pope, Pope Gregory. Yeah. He proclaimed black cats as evil. And basically, it led to loads of people like burning black cats yeah. and cats in general burning them alive so do you know where this I actually think I know where this comes from I don't know if, if I'm wrong I might be wrong but during like the plague um, there were certain women who had cats as pets okay and they also were quite clean women quite OCD women so everyone was getting diseases, everyone was getting the plague, everyone was dying. But these women who had brooms, that's how brooms are associated with witches as well, they were always brooming their house and they had a cat. Cats obviously kill and eat rats and mice. Yeah. And the plague originated from rats and mice. So the thing is, I know what you're saying, but black cats were considered evil before that. Oh, were they? Because that's how the plague came about. Because oh. they killed so many cats because they said it was evil. They were evil. There wasn't enough cats to kill the mice, oh. and that's how the black that's how the plague came about. Oh wow. And then I, I think it probably even just made it even worse that like the witches, which were just really clean women, weren't they? Yeah, who had cats. Had cats to get rid of the to make sure they're safe. Yeah. They had cats. It's just probably just made instilled the whole feel of being like the superstition that cats are evil. Even more. Yeah. Oh. But it's crazy. It's such discrimination against cats. to our furry friends. I know. <laughs> Poor things. <laughs> Oh, I love cats so much, especially since having a cat, I've become such a like a cat person as well. I know. I, I love never lucky. used to see cats like that. I feel like I'm a cat person now. Before I never understood cat people. I thought they were weird. Because yeah. I was like, why? The cats don't even give you love. Like they're so selfish. But now but since maybe because you got lucky, Anna, because Lucky's so friendly and so sweet. Well, not everyone's cats are like that. You should be very grateful you have Lucky. Lucky so to have Lucky. Sweet. Lucky to have Lucky. He's such a friendly little one, isn't he? Yeah. Even when I come when Auntie Mandy comes around, it gives me so much love. <laughs> Do we have any more superstitions? One more, and then the rest would leave for Patreon. So this one, I thought I'd share this because in case any of you guys really want a boyfriend or a girlfriend and you're feeling like, I need to be in a relationship, because a lot of people want to be in a relationship. Don't. Okay. So on New Year's Eve, you eat 12 grapes under the table. Under the table. And actually, this is a thing that's become a 
so it started, this is Spanish um, superstition, but it became viral because a lot of people were doing it. And then, then that year, they actually found the other half. No. And then they they made TikToks about it saying people were laughing at us for taking, having 12 grapes under the table. And now look. <gasps> 12 grapes on this table. Ju- ju- shit. I know, it's mad, isn't it? But do you know what it is? Like, maybe after doing that, they're like psychologically open to it and they're open to that receiving that energy. Mm-hmm. So when a man approaches them, they're like giving everyone chances because they believe they're going to find the one now because mm-hmm. they down them grapes. Yeah. Yeah, but it's true. Because you, I feel like when I was on my way here, I was thinking a lot about superstitions. Like, do I believe in it? Do I not? And I think superstitions have got a lot to do with like... If you believe in them, they're true. Manifestation. Yeah. Like, and when you manifest something or you think something and your energy goes towards that. I don't know. Yeah, it's true. Once you, When you believe something, it's more likely to happen for you and be true for you. That's why when people ask me, do you believe in ghosts? I always say no. Because <laughs> I'm worried that if I say yeah, they're going to stumble you're not going to start rolling around. Yeah. Or don't you always say to me, Mandy, like with your relationship, always try and think positive and don't think that they don't think that they cheat or don't think that they're like... Yeah. Because the more you think positive, the more positive energy is going to be around your relationship. Yeah, the more you believe something like bad is going to happen, I feel like the more likely it is going to happen. Yeah. So... Anyway, anyway guys, if you want more, note. then come on to a part two. On yeah. Patreon. Yeah, I've got some more funny ones. Um, But... I hope you enjoyed it. I thought it was really fun. I enjoyed it. was very fun. I enjoyed even just reading up on all the stuff as well. So. I know, it's very interesting where they will come from. If you want more knowledge, then subscribe to our Patreon. <laughs> we love you and we will see you next episode. Bye! Bye.